Hi, my name is Peter Landsberg from the Academic Medical Center in Amsterdam and I'm uh, sharing with you some highlights from the EAS in Innsbruck, Austria. Uh, one of the key lectures, I think, was uh, reflecting the new guidelines that have been released by the IAS Severe FH panel, um, trying to give us a better grip on how to determine which FH patients should be really treated aggressively um, and which patients uh, perhaps do not need the more expensive treatment forms. What it boils down to is that although FH as a monogenetic disorder was always considered to be a disease with a very high risk, we now know from genetic cascade screening that the phenotype from FH patient is, is not always as severe as we expected. So what the panel suggests is that we give a better uh, uh, indication for which are the very high-risk uh, FH patients. Um, first and foremost, these are FH patients who have, of course, cardiovascular disease. They're automatically in the very high-risk group. Then patients who have subclinical signs of atherosclerosis based on CT angio or based on coronary calcium score. And the third group are patients who have uh, FH plus additional risk factors. And these additional risk factors are more or less the classical risk factors that we're used to work with. So hypertension, uh, diabetes, smoking, but also male gender, uh, positive family history for uh, early cardiovascular disease. Um, and having these risk factors on top of your FH considers you to be a high risk uh, FH patient. Um, they have a three-pronged approach for treating patients with FH, where they say there is a realistic goal, which is at least a 50% LDL reduction, and there's an, uh, an optimal goal, where you say in secondary prevention, LDL should be below uh, 70 or 80 milligrams per deciliter, and in primary prevention, below 100 milligrams per deciliter. So, um, in the very high-risk patients, your first step would be to use a statin, high-intensity, high-dose, add on ezetimibe, and if your targets are not reached, which is less than 100 or less than 70, then you should add third treatment option, which would be the PCSK9 antibodies. Again, if treatment targets are not reached, you can add fourth modality, which are uh, the mypomersin, lometapide, or LDL aphoresis. Um, apart from the uh, uh, very high risk in, in, in patients with, who have FH and cardiovascular disease, um, if a patient with FH starts out with an LDL cholesterol more than 10 millimoles or 400 milligrams per deciliter, he's also considered to be a very high risk patient. If his LDL cholesterol is 8 or 320 milligrams per deciliter, he needs one additional risk factor to be considered high risk. And if his LDL is higher than 5 or more than 200 milligrams per deciliter, he needs two additional risk factors. Um, the final, I think, very specific thing for FH to consider uh, in, in the high risk category is if you, if you initiate treatment uh, at an age of 40 or older, that means the exposure to very high cholesterol levels have been a very prolonged time and that puts you automatically also in the high risk category. So I think this is a really nice uh, new tool, particularly suited in clinical practice, to better select the patients that we need to treat more intensively, trying to reach the optimal targets.